the yeah. lead organizer. We know what the position on paper says. Mm-hmm. What was the position in real life like? Um, I was Jackson's first employee mm-hmm. <laughs> and only employee for a while. <laughs> so I found myself doing a little of everything. Okay. Um, but in doing a little of everything, it allowed me to really it allowed me to really learn um, where we had strengths, where we had gaps, where we needed more people. Um, what work should be um, owned by the members and what um, accountability should be held with us, uh, one particular leader. Um, also just networked with a lot of different folks and learned more about the language of organizing and how to translate um, real life issues into a way that can be spoken to a politician or um, an engineer or um, you know just a myriad of different types of uh, people and professions. Um, so in doing that, I was able to do a lot of uh, workshops and trainings, um, and then I began doing more um, um, speaking events. I been began to do more facilitation of workshops, um, and just throughout that whole just growth and learning process, um, we were able to start expanding on the team. So you know, it was the two of us, then there was three, and then four, and we're now up to uh, nine staff. Great. Now. You also we, we, we also got to go into the elephant of the room as far as like um, in the elephant of the room. And I love it because it's so close. Like I remember the first time I was a kid and I went to Harlem. I was like, damn, this feel like a big ass Highland Park. <laughs> <laughs> that was Best. my immediate response. Best. Now, Highland Park still feels like that. Mm-hmm. Harlem, on the other hand. It's a little bit different right now. Yeah, but like, it felt, yeah, I'm like, I'm like African hair braiders, uh, yeah. vendors everywhere. Uh, just, you know, people Mirrors walking by wall. like, cool. mm-hmm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. this guy in gators talking to that guy <laughs> with no shoes on. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, it's like, this is <laughs> like, the mash like, yeah, it just, it's like, okay, this could be like either the craziest skit on like in living color, or this could be like the coolest thing ever, but whatever it, it's a pulse to it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Is. Uh, like on every level, you know, Highland Park is one of those unique places where like the most gangster hood person is next do- next door to you know, Mama M- Mama Nandi, and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. And they mm-hmm. like cool, and they be like, hey, 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 we ain't about to do that today because Mama Nandi right here. Hey, what mm-hmm. up, though? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And then next door to them is like the biggest Bible thumping uh, Jehovah's Witness. It's it's a different culture of blackness going it's on. It's so in funny Island you Park. say that because our solidarity uh, office, we have a shared office space and mm-hmm. it is next door to Mama Nandi, literally. Yeah. And it's also on the other on the other side of us is a, is a church. Uh, that uh that is uh owning and, and allowing us to use the space so mm-hmm. yeah literally that <laughs> yeah like like straight up you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like down like you know the highland park preaching is a different type of preacher so like shout it's like that old school like it's not church like okay i'm gonna go to church and, you know what i'm saying shout out no no offense to uh triumph and everything like that it's not gonna be like the hour hour and a half service you go to a highland park church you may be in there for like from <laughs> <laughs> from from nine o'clock to one o'clock you like that <laughs> this is down south. Like, what is going on <laughs> in this service? <laughs> so, like, the the whole feel, like, it's it's a different vibe. So, like, mm-hmm. organizing there had to be different. Mm-hmm. What was the feel like? It, it just it just embracing that and, yeah. and getting that taste. Um, well, the first thing I noticed in my very first uh, membership meeting was that. Uh, the majority of our uh, members were church-going uh, older black women. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that changed um, a lot of the initial approach, you know, when, during mm-hmm. the inception of Solidarity. Because initially, um, and did, can I go kind of go into the story of how yeah, we started? Yeah, go, go. Um, so Highland Park back in 2011 had about 1,000 uh, residential streetlights repossessed by uh, DTE, which mm-hmm. is our monopoly utility company. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the first time that um, folks had had even known that this could happen. Um, And it was the first time um, where it had happened, you know, especially uh, with Highland Park sitting right in the middle of Detroit. Um, There's a lot of speculation on why that was the case, you know, how the streetlights were repossessed and um, who should be held accountable or who Mm should have done what. But at at the end of the day, um, the voices of the people, you know, weren't heard. Yeah. They weren't included on the decision making. Mm-hmm. They weren't even notified that the street lights were going to be repossessed. They just saw the trucks pulling up, coming out the ground. Um, and so 
when you try to address a problem like that, um, it, it's very interesting because I believe the core team of founders was looking at for more of a technological, you know, we're going into a green era, you know, um, perspective. But Highland Parkers wasn't really at that point, you know, like they were just still blown away that the streetlights were repossessed in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that there is some um, accountability for leadership, political leadership there in Highland Park for the way that that went down. But I think ultimately what, what we realize is that um, the lights being taken um, just show kind of a, a disdain that there needs to be um, – people who are experiencing that problem at the helm of the decision-making. You know, there's kind of like this disrespect. Um, yeah. We're considered consumers, you know. And, um, you know, I think that that spoke to a much greater problem than just replacing the streetlights. So we attempted to do fundraising. We went to the city. Um, we put in mad proposals. A lot of them are, are on our website. Um, and they all got shot down, and none of them really worked. Um, so the streetlights aren't um, cheap, but they're not the most expensive thing you could do to try to improve a city. Um, and so, you know, now fast forward 10 years later, um, we just installed 10 lights over at Avalon Village yeah. um, in Parker Village. Mm -hmm. And uh, Avalon Village is ran by Mama Shu Harris. Oh, yeah. And um, she has always been a strong supporter <clears throat> of Solidarity. Uh, Juan Shannon is over at Parker Village, which is right off of uh, Buena Vista. Hmm. And um, these street lights actually have uh, Wi-Fi, mesh Wi-Fi on them. So the lights went up in uh, 2020, um, around the time COVID was kicking in, and we were all going remote, and everybody needed internet access, and children was um, out of school and needed internet access to go to school. Um, and so that's what inspired those particular lights. And um, our goal is uh, this year to do another installation of another uh, 9 to 10 lights. Okay. Uh, we haven't selected the location quite yet. We actually just got the funding. It's the beginning of the year. Cool. Um, so our goal is to try to work with, um, you know, a local-based company to install them, um, either have um, volunteers or to utilize. Uh, we're also running a training program, utilize folks in the training program to help with putting the lights up. And so then there's the material need being met with the actual light. Um, there's uh, a more progressive need being met with the with inclusion of the Internet. But then you also just have, you know, a lot of uh, white environmental justice like to throw around uh, words like inclusion and um, sustainability and, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. Um, to me, when we see um, black-led or BIPOC people coming together and deriving solutions on our own, it's so much more phenomenal, you know, because mm -hmm. we don't have... Um, maybe the technical education to be able to solve the problem. But when we galvanize together and we put everybody in the room and we don't have one leader and we all respect each other's leadership, we get tremendous things done and we get it done in really fun and creative ways. So with these lights, uh, we're part of um, some support with this uh, group called Reverb.org that talks mm. about um, greening concert uh, spaces. Cool. So um, not only are we getting opportunity to reach a different demographic with music, uh, we're also able to show um, the power of black leadership in these spaces, especially, you know. That's deep. And crime has gone up everywhere else in the entire country. Yeah. So, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily been the lights, and it's not the people that you fear. But, again, you pointed on some of the other things that lights provide, you know. And when you look at <clears throat> the way that Highland Park has been divested from and you look at the resources that should be coming um, from the state that are going to um, other communities, Ann Arbor, you know, and other um, communities that already have the wealth base to be yeah. able to do this on their own, out their own pockets. It's like, okay, I'm, maybe I'm missing something here. Yeah. And, um, and so in addition to just having people excited that the lights are going to come back, you know, through the hard work of folks that are, again, 10 years so far, um, we've been dedicated to this, to this mission, but also that we are trying to afford other opportunities for um, systemic change and for yeah. policy change and yeah. to um, have folks, have the leadership of black folks continue to be respected so that we can continue to be self-governing uh, as much as possible. And so the other thing that's unique about our lights is that uh, we push for community ownership of the lights. Wow. We don't want to ask, you know, a million dollar um, um, 
I forgot what they call them. It's, I'm having a brain freeze. A developer to come into Highland Park and just throw up the lights because we won't own them and we'll find ourselves back in the same situation. The goal mm -hmm. is to create um, self-determining and, um, again, sustainable results. And sustainable is not just um, a green word. You know, it's a red, black, and green word. It means that like it. we are getting ready to be able to pass this down to generations. My children's and my children's children are going to remember the work that was done and they're going to be able to build on this. And so um, I think that that's the bigger story that, you know, although we're working in one lane of energy democracy and clean energy and, you know, like some of the other uh, phrases you may hear, I think at the end of the day, we're still fighting for the liberation of black people um, and to provide them with the best living conditions that they can afford, I mean, that they can have.